What the heck is this? What the heck? Well, this is a swing bike. And we're going to make, well, we made this one, obviously. And we're going to make two more. And uh, then we're going to play because they're fun. So we started out with two bushings from the parts drawer, which I had. And a piece of pipe that was way too big in diameter, but through some circumference removal techniques, I've removed about a, I don't know, a bunch, enough to make it egg shape. But if I put it, if I put the bushing in it and put it in a vise and squish it, it gets pretty round. So I'm gonna do that and weld it back. And that'll be the start of our swing bike. That'll be the start, the first part to make for the swing bike. So I took off the back wheel and the crank set just to make it easier to mess with this bike. This is my pivot. Um, this is my pivot. I've got the two bushings and a shaft that fits in the middle. Now I can either affix the outside part to the back end of the bike and affix the inner shaft to the front end of the bike or I can do it the other way around. I think I'm going to fix the threaded part, the shaft, the inner shaft. It shouldn't be threaded but that's what I have. I think I'm going to fix the inner shaft to the back of the bike and and use the outside part to weld off the front half of the bike. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it. I'm going to cut the bike here and here and then see what I need to do to get this shaft in there and get needs to be a good weld, needs to be strong. Start grinding. Okay, I'm ready to weld this mess up. The um, threaded rod will be fixed and the other rod will turn and get some weld here and here and then put a plate over it and put a plate over this. It should be plenty strong enough. And my, my bushings were still loose, so I cut another slot and I will squeeze these together with a clamp and weld them again because I don't want any more rattle than I have to have. So we'll tighten that up, do a little welding, do a little grinding, maybe even put some paint on it. Yeah, probably not. So the bike was originally like this, but I think I'm gonna lower this a little bit and cut a cove or grind a cove so that I can just weld this pipe to this pipe. And then I'll have to cut this pipe some kind of way and put a different one because that's obviously not gonna work. But uh, right now I'm gonna try to grind a cove for a nice fit. I might even go ahead and weld it just so I have something stable to go by. So, to start from. So I've got a pretty respectable fit right here. I'm gonna go ahead and weld it so I can turn it upside down and piece in the bottom part. And then that's all there is to it. Just put the bike back together, I think. Okay, look at that fit. Better than I was hoping for. So I'm gonna weld it up, do some grinding, put the bike back together, and we will have a uh Okay, so this is a big, big brain fart here. I actually uh, cut the frame in half and then welded it right back together. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. This should have been welded to the pivot, not to the frame. But <clears throat> luckily, I only had it tacked in a few spots before I realized that um, I was not heading in the right direction. So I took it back off, made some more changes, and got it welded to the um, pivot tube and now everything's lovely and um most guys wouldn't show you this because this is really stupid but this is how i roll sometimes we're all welded up i washed some of the mold off of the bike and this one's good to go and i think it's going to be popular so i'm gonna make another one just like it well almost just like it what kind of bike you got there molly um uh, it's like a swing bike but it's what it can do Oh yeah, that looks fun. And it can like... Can you ride it? Um, yeah. Go for it. Woo, she's riding crooked. So this little 20 inch bike and the one after this that we're going to make, they're pretty docile. They're pretty easy to ride. They're not too crazy. The swing arm, the length is just not that much. So even the little ones, uh, Molly, my granddaughter, and then my nephew's two sons came, and all three of them were able to just jump on and within seconds riding away. Okay, this is our second uh, potential swing bike in the works. I'm going to remove both wheels and the crank set just to make it easier to 
move the thing around. So once again, I'm gonna cut the frame in half right through here. And for the swivel, I have these two bearings, which are in my junk drawer, and they will fit inside this pipe. They're a little loose, so I'll have to split the pipe and clamp down on it. This is a heavy wall pipe, it's a water pipe, which is not ideal. I really only need like this much of it, so it'll be all right. I might even put it in my new lathe and make it thinner. Take some of that outside diameter off. But anyway, I'm gonna start cutting. There's no going back after this. So this is my outer sleeve for the bearing. I put it in the lathe and I turned it down to kind of lighten it up a little bit. And it wasn't happy in the lathe. It had a ton of chatter marks. So I ended up putting the um, flap disc and the grinder on it with it turning in the lathe to kind of get it less ugly. I cut a slide in it so I can squeeze it because it's a little bit too big. I made this little um, aluminum spacer pipe to keep the bearings from like sliding into the middle. On the other bike, the bushings had a little flange on them so they couldn't slide in. But there's really gonna be nothing to keep these from sliding in. So I'll put this little pipe in the middle between the two bearings and everything will be lovely. I'll go ahead and squish this tight on the bearing and uh, weld this gap back up. It should be plenty because it's almost tight, but it's not quite tight. So bike number two pivot is ready to weld. Um, it's pretty simple. I've got a notch in the uh, the old piece of frame that fits the axle, which is actually a threaded rod. I dropped a washer, and then the rod goes through the bearing, through that. Uh, aluminum tube through the other bearing and sits up here and I cut this little plate it's going to sit up here I'm going to weld it all up and once we weld it we won't be able to take it apart but that's okay it should never need to come apart and if it does I have a grinder so that will allow this to swivel where we will attach the front half of the bike to this so this was the original geometry of the bicycle pretty much exactly right there so i'll be able to keep the top tube i just need to cope it trim a little bit and cope it fit the swivel and the bottom tube i'll have to reroute so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, kind of cope this top tube and probably go ahead and weld it on there so with the top coped it fits pretty good and the bottom i cut two notches to bend it up a little bit and now it's short, so, but I have this old blue bike and this blue tube fits inside the pink tube. So if I cut this back square, I can slide the blue tube up in there and cope it to fit that and it'd be a done deal. Okay, I got the top coped, the blue pipe coped, not much paint left on it, and slid into the pink pipe. The pink pipe is double welded and everything is lined up. It's all copacetic. Ready to weld it up, and then that's it for this frame. I will put Bondo on these welds and kind of make them a little bit pretty. But uh, structurally, but structurally, it's about to be finished. Well, my bicycle building got rudely interrupted. I had to do some casting for my wife, but it's done for now. Waiting on her to help me do the patina, or for her to do the patina. I'm getting back to the bikes now. I wanna do my third swing bike. Decisions, decisions, do a cut up the black bike or the gray and purple bike. Um, I think the black bike is a much better made bike. Like the thickness of the metal here is like twice what the little purple bike is. So, and the cranks are kind of long and I think for my use, the shorter cranks would be better. So I'm gonna cut up the little, the little huffy and uh, spare the diamond back for now. I don't know what his future holds, but we're gonna First of all, take everything off the frame and start scratching your head, scratching my head. So this one's going to be a little different. I want a longer radius on the swing. I want it to make it a little squirrelier, a little more challenging to ride. So instead of the, the pivot being short from here to here, I want to move the pivot back to here. So I'll move the back seat, I mean, the seat post to here and then get rid of all this stuff. I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah, and I'm going to use this blue to come vertical from here. 
and this seat tube on top of that and cut cut all this away yeah man we're gonna we're gonna butcher up this bike for sure okay i've made my first couple of cuts i removed these stays and these are stays from another bike and i'm gonna put them right here and weld them um not vertical because that'll make the bike so tippy going over backwards i'm gonna have to lean them forward a little bit just to get some weight on the front wheel I'm going to go ahead and put this in place and at least tack it. Otherwise, I'm just going to have a big old bowl of spaghetti here. i got to get something ironed out. Okay, we got that tacked on. Now, I want to make it the wheelbase a little bit longer so it'll be easier for big people to pedal this thing. So I'm going to whack this off here and open that up, I don't know, three or four inches and put something back to hold it. Okay, you got a couple of special order Huffy extension bolts. Go. They're in there, everything's straight, pretty straight, straight by eye, and uh, we're gonna weld it. So it's time to cut the seat tube from the bottom bracket. Ooh, it's warm. Um, but then I need something to brace it, so I think I'm gonna use these old rear stays. I'm not sure, they're kind of short. But I'm gonna cut this free, and then we're gonna brace this, and then um, start working on the seat post and the swivel. I got this cut and cleaned up and I'm using the oversized wheel on the four and a half inch grinder to get to all these weird corners. And I am wearing a face shield because I'm spinning that wheel faster than it's supposed to spin. Um, okay, so I was hoping to use these blue stays to brace that crank set, but they're just a little short and I don't, I don't think they're gonna work. Um, so I can use this square tube. I got a truckload of that stuff. But before I cut it and fit it, I think I'm going to go ahead and put the seat tube on, which is this tube. Kind of make sure they all go together correctly. So I'm going to cut this free and uh, just kind of mock it up there. This is also going to be the pivot tube. So I may not end up using this specific tube, but for now, I'm going to cut it free and see what it looks like. So if the seat tube or a seat tube goes up here, and it is also the swivel, then the stays, they need to come down lower. They need to go over here to be out of the way. So I don't know what I'm gonna do up here, but I do know the stays are gonna have to go from here to here to brace this off. I'm gonna have to close that hole up. So uh, I'm gonna cut the blue ones out and see if I can't make them longer with the other blue ones. Cause I really wanna use these blue ones cause they look bicycly and not like a piece of water pipe stuck in there. Okay, things are working out. This is the rear stay tube from this bike. This would be the, and it fits here, like yo. But it also slides into this part. I just cut it off of that side. So between the two, I'm gonna be long enough. So I'm gonna tack this together and I'm gonna slip the back wheel on to make sure it doesn't rub on this. This is good, doing good here, good stuff. So it's time to wrap it up for the day, but I got the back end in pretty good shape. Um, no problem with the wheel hitting anywhere. I'm having trouble, whoa, <laughs> this fell off. Um, I need a swivel and I don't have much to pick from. Um, even though I have my lathe now, I still have a limited number of sizes of tubes and bearings. I got this headset with non-matching bearings and races but I don't have the tube that goes through it. So I think if I go to the bike shop and buy a longer um, seat tube, this will go through it. Or I go to the old man around the corner who sells used bikes. I can get a whole bike for 10 bucks. I bet the seat tube costs them more than 10 bucks. So I'm gonna go see the old gentleman and pick up another bike to cut apart just for the head tube. That's all I need is the head tube, the top of the forks really. This part up here, I can't use it cause I need it. And I hate to cut up that other decent bike just to salvage that, scrounge that one piece. So I'm gonna go buy another $10 bike. Maybe he's got parts he'll just give me. So there's an older gentleman and he happens to live right around the corner from my shop here. <clears throat> and he has some kind of connection with somebody at a dump or a landfill or works on a uh, garbage truck. And they grab these little bikes for him and he has like dozens of them. 
he puts them together, makes them work, sells them for 10 bucks a piece so kids can have bikes. He's in, it's in a kind of a poor neighborhood. But anyway, I went and grabbed this one because this was the one with the longest headset. I figured that'd be stronger. These little Chinese bikes, there's not much to them. So this is the one I picked. I'm gonna cut this headset off. I'm gonna use it for the swivel, um, put it for the swing bike. I got the seat post cleaned up. Um, it fits good here. That's gonna put the seat almost in line with the back axle, which is gonna make the bike kind of a wheelie tippy thing. And I need, it needs to be strong because the swivel's going to be mounted to it. So I think I'm going to trim some of this back, try to get a weld here and here, and maybe make a plate, a gusset, to tie the seat post to these two top things. That ought, that ought to make it pretty strong. Let's, let's do that. Let's start whacking. Seat post is in place. I can't go much lower than this because the tire comes right about here. So I get a little weld on this uh, existing plate. You can't see it because of the clamp. I get a little weld here and here, and then I made a little bracket to uh, further strengthen it because the pivot's gonna be hanging off of this seat post. So I want it to be as strong as I can get it. But you, but you can see how thin this freaking metal is by the time you sand the paint off. There's not much left. Makes it challenging to weld. Okay, seat tube is welded in place. I think it's pretty strong, strong enough. I need to take the headset off of this new bike and <clears throat> weld it onto the seat tube. So this is gonna be my pivot and I think it's gonna work okay because I think if I cut the two forks off, I have a straight tube that I can attach to the bottom of the seat tube. And if I put the fork, the handlebar back in, cut this off, I can weld the top part to this and I think the middle part will be free to pivot. And then uh, the rest of the bike will come off of here. I don't want to cut this yet because I don't know how I'm going to fix that on there. So I cut the handlebar stem and put it in there and cleaned it up so I can weld here. But that kind of puts the whole pink thing a little lower than I wanted. So I think I'm going to raise it up here and just weld onto the... Uh, I'm just going to use the hex nut at the top to weld it back to the uh, <clears throat> seat tube so I can get a, like fabricate a little plate for the top, a little plate for the bottom, and uh, moving right along. So use some CAD, cardboard aided design. I'm sorry, that's an old joke. I cut a little pattern, I cut it out of steel, I got this tacked barely, and I got another piece of cardboard, another little template, and I'm going to I'll put it on here and scribe it. I'm gonna cut this out of this piece of steel. It's the same steel that this one is. And I'll be ready to weld it. Okay, we're all welded up with the pivot. I got a seat post that fit. I found a seat that fit. Um, and got a back wheel on it. It's not the back wheel, but it is a back wheel. It has a coaster brake. That's what I was looking for. Um, so I'm gonna put the crank set in. And then I'm gonna put wheel on the front forks and just kind of lay it out to see how long the connection needs to be between the head tube on the front forks and this uh, swivel back here. It's kind of hard to visualize all this stuff in your head without just putting pieces on there. So put the crank set back in right now, put some grease on it. So this is something I wasn't envisioning. Um, the sprocket that hits the uh, rear stay that I added. I'm gonna have to smush this in a little bit. I was really worried about it hitting the tire, but it's nowhere close to the tire. I should be able to just maybe hit that with a hammer and bend it a little bit. Got the bike propped up on the workbench and held with various clamps and things, and I sat on it, and the proportions feel pretty good. So I need a piece of steel to go from the front to this pink thing back here, and I don't really have anything suitable. I got some heavy, heavy stuff. And that's all I got. I do have this little bike that I could cut both of these off and put them end to end. This is the same tube as this and run it up there. I don't think it's strong enough just with that, but maybe if I put that and add some kind of braces on the bottom of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these off of this frame and uh, look at 
putting them end to end to make them long enough. This is probably a backwards way to do this, but I got the first piece of pink um, tube set up there. It's kind of where it came from, but I changed the angle a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and tack it into place while I got all this contraption holding it up. So I took the front end off to remove this stuff, but before I did, I measured what I needed to add on to the pink pipe. I needed 10 more inches. So I've added 10 more inches. I've got it pretty straight. I'm gonna tack this together um, and then swing it back to the front and put the front end on it and then start f figuring out how I'm gonna brace it because this is definitely not strong enough like it is. Okay, I got it where I want it, I think. It's kind of precarious trying to clamp something that has two wheels and two pivots to get it to stay put and make sure it's straight. But I think it's straight. I think it looks good. So I'm gonna try really hard to get a tack on the front pipe here because it is just barely sitting there. If I touch it, it's gonna fall. So I've cut this little piece to brace up this front connection. And I cut the rest of this pink tube in half and I'm gonna put patch on both sides to give this uh, butt joint weld a little strength and weld it. And in the back, I hadn't thought about that yet, but it'll probably be similar to this, just bigger. I'll come as far as I can with what I got. And I hope I don't run out of welding gas. I don't have a whole lot. I'm ready to add an, another brace onto this uh, long piece because I think it needs another brace. And I really don't have crap left back there. This is the longest piece of tube I have. So I was thinking about maybe doing like one of these, but a longer one. And then that still leaves a long stretch of this single tube in the middle. And this stuff is like paper thin. So I'm gonna use a piece of my rectangular tubing to go front to back. And I'm gonna bend it in an arc so I can weld it in the middle. And then we'll weld it here and weld it here. So I gotta cut all this off and get it out the way. Um, I know square doesn't belong on a bike, but it's what I got. So this is what we're gonna have. So I put the square bar under there and I didn't bend it as much. Well, I bent it all the way till it touched, but it didn't look good. So I unbent it and I just have it welded at each end. And I think it's gonna be okay. So now I need to um, put two chains together since I, since I stretched this forward, one chain's not gonna be enough. And I got several of them, they're very rusty. I'm gonna put some oil on them um, and splice them together. I don't have a master link, but I found you don't really have to have one. You can just use the old link and just kind of peen the top over just a little bitty bit. So the way I get these chains to come apart and probably a lot of people do the same thing, I put the flap disc on and just barely sand the bumps off one side, just barely sand them off. I wanna leave as much metal as I can. And then take a punch preferably with a flat end because if you take like a prick punch with a pointy end it tends to um, swell up the pin and make it even harder to get them apart but you see how easy that came apart now when you go to put them back together it's a different story because unlike a master link that you would like buy at a store like a real master link um, these pins don't fit in the hole they're uh, they're what do you call that they are interference fit they're tight so putting the first piece of chain together on a workbench wasn't so bad because i could just lay it flat and hit it with a hammer and get get the two pieces of the link back together and then i laid it out on the bike and uh, one of the chains was real rusty and still had lumps in it, it made it kind of hard but uh, those will come out with a little pedal and i did put some oil on them but the chain that goes on the bike, you can't lay it flat on a workbench. You have to get them together, the, the new links or reusing the old links. You have to use a pair of pliers and it's it's uh, tricky because it's a friction fit and you gotta really push it until it snaps back in. Um, and I didn't get any footage. Gordon, he's too far away. Well, I got a bunch of memory on my phone. What? There you go. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right, kick it out. Do a kick bop. Do a boop bop. What? 
So I spent a good bit of the last three weeks building these three bicycles. Um, and what do I have to show for it? Have I cured cancer? No. Have I solved the world's problems? No. But I've made some little ones smile and uh, spend some good time with my grandchild and my uh -huh. nephews riding up and down the driveway. Um, so what's it worth to put a smile on a kid's face? And plus, when my daughter's children come over, she has four, but three of them are bike riding age. And when my son's son comes over, he has another, he rides bikes. And when my other son comes Look over, Molly. He's not trustworthy. She rides bikes, so it's going to be a zoo. We'll get all the bikes out. Yeah, it's a lot prettier and, uh, than yours. We'll have fun together. That's what it's all about. So I have one more bicycle in mind to build, and after that, um, we'll move on to something else. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.